Now dispersion, by definition dispersion uh, means the spread in time domain okay in, in in the context of communication dispersion means spread in time domain when it propagates through a fiber dispersion of a fiber is the spread in the time domain so let us say I start with a my 1 is here 0 is here 1 is here this is my input to the fiber the output of the fiber comes like this this pulse spreads this one also spreads right this spread is what is called as dispersion. The question is what are the why should the pulse spread as it propagates through the fiber. Now remember you do not have to be restricting your thoughts to only single mode fiber you could have multi mode fiber you could have step index fiber you could have graded index fiber let us not talk about the refractive index profile right now it could have multiple modes and its light is propagating through silica fiber okay what are the possible reasons can you think of to uh, that will result in the broadening of the pulse different velocities of the modes okay so one possible reason is that modes experience different velocities why do they experience different velocities because n effective is different you have actually told the most uh, non intuitive uh, uh, reason for dispersion of course it is intuitive now because we just finished uh, n effective okay so different modes will have different n effective so they will have uh, is that dependent on n1 n2 lambda indirectly it is dependent on n1 n2 and lambda and a and so on what else so what is uh, amorphous silica got to do with uh, spreading the pulse amorphous broadening what does that mean ah uh, why does it happen is what we are seeing So, think beyond modes of the fiber now. <laughs> laser has a line width, the source has a line width and so there are different colors propagating and because different colors are propagating the material offers different velocities to different colors. So, all of them started together, but at the receiver end all these colors appeared at different times so you have a dispersion okay so you say that uh, laser or source it doesn't have to be a laser right source has a, a wavelength spread so different colors propagate at different speeds why do different colors propagate at different uh, speeds through the fiber this has nothing to do with the modes okay why do different colors propagate it is like what happens in a rainbow prism right different colors propagate with different speeds so you at the output of the prism you have all the colors coming in different parts. So, this is what is called as material dispersion ok material shows dispersion silica is glass, glass has certain refractive indices for different uh, wavelengths and so it will have uh, a spread what other reasons different modes propagate at different so different modes propagate or different modes take different instead of angle I am modifying and saying that uh, different uh, ray paths they are taking different 
paths okay and because uh, they are taking different paths uh, you will have uh, all of them are arriving all, all the modes start together you launched all the modes together but they arrive the same information is carried by different modes but they arrive at different uh, delays and so that can that can cause uh, spread in the pulse okay so you call this kind of dispersion as intermodal dispersion okay you call this spread as intermodal dispersion this happens whenever you have multiple modes in the system which means that it does not happen in a single, single mode fiber then you have material dispersion uh, does it happen in single mode fibers yes does it happen in multi mode fibers yes because it has nothing to do whether the mode is single mode or multi mode it has to do with the fact that the source has a spread uh, this one modes experience different velocities is kind of intermodal dispersion we are talking about but there is one more class of dispersion called as waveguide dispersion the reason for waveguide dispersion is also this the source has a wavelength spread because the source has a wavelength spread the lambda is different and because lambda is different your uh, v number is different for different lambdas and because v number is different the n effective for different lambdas are different which is why we calculated the mode field diameter we, we know that even if it is single moded the effective index is different for different lambdas and when the effective index is different you will have this uh, well I should not relate it to this uh, oops. so what are we saying uh, source has a wavelength spread so source has different lambdas and each of these lambdas will have different values of n effective and because the n effectives are different different colors propagate with slightly different effective indices and so there is waveguide dispersion it did not come because the material had different uh, uh, it did not come or this is an addition to the fact that the material shows a dispersive property the waveguiding property itself the effective index is a waveguiding phenomena right effective index is a concept which came in only because of the waveguiding so even for a single mode fiber you will have material dispersion as well as waveguide dispersion okay so typically we talk about intermodal dispersion and material dispersion in case of a multi mode fiber depending on the number of modes supported sometimes intermodal if there are very large number of modes intermodal dispersion will be much larger than the material dispersion because there are large number of modes so there is a large difference in their propagation path whereas for a single mode fiber we talk about there is no intermodal dispersion it is only intramodal dispersion and there for a single mode fiber we talk about material dispersion and and waveguide dispersion. And you should also remember one more thing both these uh, material and waveguide dispersion comes because of the fact that the source has a spread. Now 
the source has a spread uh, because of its natural line width of the source, but when you are modulating the source then also the so source spreads. So, the moment you have modulated light even though let us say you had a source which is like an ideal delta function ok, it did not have any spread, but the moment you modulate it what happens? Depending on the kind of modulation in the frequency domain the source spreads. So, even if I take a source which is of ultra narrow line width, if I modulate at 25 gigabaud, which means that I am spreading the first nulls are appearing at 25 gigahertz on the right side, 50 25 gigahertz on the left side. So, I have already created a uh, frequency spread of 50 gigahertz, right. So, the moment you have modulated data, this all this dispersion will still start coming into play, ok. Now, we talk about uh, intermodal dispersion first and this is quite uh, very straightforward to find out what this intermodal dispersion is. So, let us say I have theta i as my incident angle, theta r as my uh, reflected angle, theta c here and I know that the largest angle uh, smallest angle here should be theta c corresponding to that the largest angle is uh, theta i and we did this calculation before right. So, we said the largest possible in incident angle will correspond to n naught if this is n naught, n naught sin theta i is equal to n 1 is a core index n 1 sin theta r and this is n 1 cos theta c simply because theta r plus theta c is equal to 90 degree and cos theta c is uh, square root of 1 minus sin square theta c and sin theta c is n 2 by n 1. So, this is something that we know of already. The only slight change we are going to make here is uh, we are going to expand this. So, this is n 1 square minus n 2 square n 1 cancels out and n 1 square minus n 2 square is n 1 minus n 2 into n 1 plus n 2 and I am going to call this n 1 minus n 2 divided by uh, n 1 as delta. So, this is uh, is this correct? And I am approximating n 1 approximately equal to n 2. So, that n 1 plus n 2 is 2 n 1. Difference matters, but when I am summing it does not matter is what I am saying here. Okay. So, n 1, so this, this one I am saying it is 2 n 1. So, there is a root 2 here and uh, so this is actually root of n 1 minus n 2 times 2 n 1 and n 1 minus n 2 divided by n 1 is what I am calling as delta. So, if I am going to write it in terms of delta this one extra n 1 outside. So, this delta simply tells you the difference in index between the core and cladding with reference to the core index. It gives you a measure of how different the core and cladding indices are. Now, we say which is the shortest path and which is the longest path. Shortest path is when I launch it straight everything comes out straight ok that corresponds to theta i equal to 0. So, let us say in one uh, reflection within one reflection let us the let us take the length pro the length is L ok. This is not the length of the fiber, but length between you know. Uh, so, I am comparing two ray paths the shortest path and the longest path. Shortest path takes this trajectory the longest path corresponding to the largest angle would take a path from here to here and from here to here and this keeps repeating ok. In this section also the shortest path takes this path, longest path takes this path and if the fiber is kept straight I can say that I can in I can now find out the difference in arrival time by just taking the difference in the uh, path difference between the two and convert that path difference into a time difference. So, if this is theta c, what is the longest path now? 
can you write down uh, the longest uh, path which is sum of this plus this in terms of theta c and uh, l l sin theta c is that correct what is sin theta c sin theta c is l by 2 divided by the path that i want so sin theta c is l by 2 divided by the path uh, in fact uh, we want path 1 plus path 2 so path is path 1 is l by 2 sin theta c so the total path will be l by sin theta c so longest path corresponds to this launch angle launch angle we have already calculated so, what is the difference between, so this corresponds to L and this corresponds to L divided by sin theta c. So, what is the time difference now? Which one is larger? Obviously, L by sin theta c is larger. So, what is the uh, path difference? L times 1 by sin theta c minus 1. What is the time difference? Path divided by speed will give you the time difference. So, the time difference is uh, speed is I am just taking it as c by n, c divided by n 1 and l n 1 by c and I know that sin theta c is n 2 by n 1. So, this is n 1 by n 2 minus 1. So, this is L n 1 C n 2 and I have n 1 minus n 2 and I know that n 1 minus n 2 divided by n 1 is delta. So, I have to multiply with a n 1 in the numerator to write it in terms of delta. So, this is n 1 square divided by n 2 L divided by C delta. So, depending on your n 1 and n 2 and your delta which is related to n 1 and n 2 ok. You can now find out what is the, uh, so this this is simply the intermodal dispersion. What is the unit of this? Second. So, typically it is represented as uh, nanoseconds or picoseconds per kilometer or per meter you will always put length as 1 meter or 1 kilometer and these are the parameters that are uh, you know decided by the fiber. So, you say that I have a fiber with an intermodal dispersion of these many picoseconds per kilometer or these many picoseconds or these many nanoseconds per meter that is how you represent this uh, intermodal dispersion.